Welcome to the 3C Live Experience, a dynamic, multiracial, fast-growing church with thousands of believers filled with passion for God and for people. Let's join 3C in this live experience. So we're going to get into the Word of God this morning, and the title of the message, once again, is Done With Debt. Say, we're done with debts. Say, we're done with debts. And as I promised last week, I'm going to touch on the subject of debt and how to get out of that. And um, I know the Lord's going to help you with that. It's important to understand in Proverbs 22 and verse 7 that says, The borrower is a servant to the lender. The borrower is a servant to the lender. That applies in your personal finances. That applies in your family finances. That applies in your business that applies if you're running a, a, a department or you're running an institution or you're running a government institution. The law applies the same. The debt law is the same. Whether you're doing a business, whether you're running government, whether it's our country's debt, you must understand to whom we owe the, the money we are controlled by. Can I get a big amen there? Amen must always be your goal to be done with debt. Otherwise, you're controlled by the person to whom you owe the money and the debt. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. And that's why we look at debt and specifically unsecured debt. Unsecured debt is a loan that's not backed by an underlying asset. In other words, like a house you may be bought for a million, you owe half a million. That's an underlying asset. But today we're talking more about unsecured debt, like credit cards, where you spend and you can't show anything for it. Where you bought the pair of jeans that had holes when you bought it, <laughs> and it's now just got more holes. Can I get a big amen there? That's worthless. The couch you bought, from your uncle, which you discovered was not your uncle. <laughs> Are you hearing me? And uh, you owe him, the couch is broken, the cushion has got coffee on, it's worthless, but you still owe the money. So, specifically, credit card debt, and a debt that is not controlled specifically uh, by an underlying, an underlying asset. When it comes to unsecured debt, we're talking about the stuff we are playing, we're talking about furniture, we're talking about clothing, we're talking about having those type of accounts. I don't know if you get all the phone calls that have told you that you can get a credit card. Okay, you can get a, you can get a, a loan. And the one thing you'll say is when they sell you the debt is they always use the words, you deserve it. Hello, somebody. I actually worded the two ads. I worded, I used the words that they use in the ad. Do you want me to read it for you? It says the following. Could there be a better way to achieve your financial freedom? <laughs> Think about it for a minute. This is an ideal way for you to become a master of your finances. The ideal way to provide yourself with the little extras that you know you really deserve. <laughs> Just click here and receive your shiny new card and start enjoying life. <laughs> Who's been caught by that one? Let me read another one to you. Another ad said the following. Your credit card will get you what you want, when you want so come on and spoil yourself. You deserve it. <laughs> What's amazing that in these ads, they never use the word debt. They never say, hey, I'm selling you debt. They never mention the word debt. Because all we see when we put it into the ATM, it says, oh, funds available. No, it's a lie. That's the devil. <laughs> it's not available. It's not yours. You're going to pay it back, and oh, my boy, you're going to be paying. Hallelujah. 
You're going to be paying through your teeth, not the 5,000. It's the extra that goes with it. Can I get a big amen there? Amen. So we've got to understand when it comes to debt, people don't sell it as debt, but it is debt. The cards, the accounts, it is debt. I looked at a th thesaurus, Rajesh thesaurus, and it gives synonyms for the word debt. And this is the words that it will use for someone that is in debt, especially unsecured debt. It says the following, another word for debt, owe, obligated, liable, in deficit, in default, insolvent, encumbered, in over one's head, tied up, out of pocket, in arrears, indigent, pauper, destitute, penniless, needy, lacking, distressed, in difficulty, a deadbeat, having a wolf at your door, living hand to mouth, beggarly, empty, having seen better days, gone to the dogs, wrecked and ruined, impoverished. Some of you going, stop. <laughs> You're describing me. Bad off, hard up, beaten down, reduced to ruin, flee, stripped, bereft, bereaved, reduced, unable to make ends meet, embarrassed, broke, and busted. Hallelujah. See, that's what debt is all about. That's what you're buying when you receive that card. Are you hearing me? And the Bible teaches us about debt. And therefore, I'm going to look at a few scriptures today. I'm going to show you, and then I'm going to speak about how to get out of debt. So how do you know that you're in trouble? How do you know that we, you're already in the trap? You're already in danger. How do you know? Because it's trapped. Usually you don't know you're in danger. Well, number one, you begin living on credit instead of paying cash. In other words, you just charge it. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 27 says, don't withhold payment of your debts. Don't say some other time if you can pay now. In other words, rather than paying with the cash that you have, you rather pay it on credit card so that you can pay later. The Bible says, don't say some other time if you can pay now. Tell your neighbor, pay with cash. Pay with cash. No. So you pay with credit so you can still have the cash. So it's pretty simple. How do you know if you're living on credit? Your balance of your credit card increases every month. So we need to get to that place where we are not living on credit. Studies show that if you have a credit card on average, you'll spend 23% more in a store that you walked into if you have a credit card. Number two, how do you know you're in trouble? Delaying payments or paying the minimum due. When you begin to have to delay your payments or pay the minimum due, if you have to pay the minimum due, you're already in trouble. Hello? You see, when it comes to a credit card, you have to be able to pay the whole card off by the end of the month. If you can't pay the card off by the end of the month, you shouldn't have a credit card. Okay, you don't hear me. <laughs> if you cannot pay your credit card in full by the end of the month, you shouldn't have a credit card because the amount of interest that you're paying is of the most expensive debt you can have. So you shouldn't use credit card debt. Are you hearing me? You should get another business plan and go work it out. But credit card is never an option. Turn to your neighbor, say it's never an option. Tell your neighbor it's a big fat lie. Tell your neighbor it's the devil's card. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me? Why? It's easy debt. It's, it's unsecured debt. Because it's unsecured, it charges more interest. Are you hearing me? So it's never good debt. So, 
where are we now? I lost my notes. Okay, so if you're paying, if you're delaying your payments, paying the minimum due, you're already in trouble. Number three, if you're unable to tithe or to save, what did we say? How much you tithe? How much you save? 10%. You work off 80% of your salary. 80% of your income. You tithe 10%, you save 10%. The rest of the, 10, the, rest of the 80%, you manage your finances. That's good management. So first of all, Malachi 3.8, will a man rob God that you have robbed me? If you want God to sanctify everything and be involved in everything that you own, you've got to give to that which belongs to the Lord. And then Proverbs 21.20 says, the wise have wealth and luxury, but fools spend whatever they get. The wise man saves for the future, another translation says, but the foolish man spends whatever he gets. Number four. You know you're in the debt trap if you're unable to pay taxes. Tell your neighbor, pay your tax. Yes. Matthew 22 verse 21 says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. Number five, extravagant spending. When you start overspending, buying things that you don't need because you have the money. When you find yourself You'll be in a debt trap. Listen to this. Proverbs 21 verse 17. He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. Tell your neighbor, uh, pastor speaking about you. <laughs> Another translation says, indulging in luxuries, wine and food will never make you wealthy. Are you hearing me? Okay. Number six. If you're always looking for get-quick-rich schemes, to all our lotto players out there, <laughs> waiting for your ship to come in, hallelujah. One day when the big deal comes, I'm waiting for your ship. That ship's not coming. It's hard work. Are you hearing me? It's applying yourself. It's building character. It's building relationships. Over a period of time, the trust and integrity have you, that is built will start paying off. Trust and integrity, you don't build in one year. It takes years of faithfulness. And you know what? Those relationships will always pay off. How do we get out of debt? A few pointers. How to get out of debt. Number one, you've got to commit to becoming debt free. You've got to make that choice. You want to be debt free. You've got to make a decision. If you don't make the decision, you know what? It's not going to happen. No one automatically by accident gets out of debt. It doesn't work like that way. Debt creeps up on you and it increases and increases and increases. And until the day you decide, I'm done with it, I don't want this, I don't want to be controlled. Until you make that decision, you will always be in debt, which means you will always be owned by somebody else. You've got to make that choice. So it starts with a commitment, and it's not going to be easy. It's not an easy commitment. But it becomes easier once you do it. Once you start applying yourself, once you start living like that, you'll find it becomes easy to live like that. But to start, it will be difficult. It takes character and commitment and a decision to get out of debt. Number two, start tithing and saving first. Tithe 10% and save 10%. What must you do? Tithe 10% and save 10%. They call it the 10-10-80 plan. The 10-10-80 plan. Number three, list all that you own and all that you owe and be honest not in faith you understand when you list what you're getting it's not in faith you trust the Lord this is in faith the income I know we men and women of faith hallelujah no be realistic put it on a piece of paper Proverbs 24 verse 3 says, By wisdom a house is built, and through understanding it is established. 
Proverbs 18 verse 13 uses the following word. He says, it is stupid to decide before you know the facts. It is stupid to decide before knowing the facts. You've got to know what's going on. You've got to know what you own, what your income is, what you earn, and you've got to know what you owe. You've got to know where your money goes. Have you got me? What you own, what you owe, what you earn, and where it goes. You've got to know what's going on. Then, once you know what's going on, have a sale. Get rid of everything you don't need. Hello? Get rid of everything you don't need. Sell it. If you don't need two cars, sell one car. If you got a car that's too expensive and you've already bought it and you think, well, you're going to lose, let me tell you, you're going to lose more by keeping it. You can't own a Land Rover and have a landlord. (laughs) Get rid of the Land Rover. Get yourself a smaller car. Get yourself a car that's dependable because a car is just a tool. A car is not your identity. Get a car and put the sticker on there, I own a home. driving these big cars and you're renting your house. You're renting your house, which means your your life is owned continually by somebody else. See, property is an asset that grows. And debt against a property is secured. A car is a tool. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So if you've got an expensive car, get rid of the car. Yes, you'll lose or whatever, but in the long run, you're going to have cash flow to be able to pay your debt off. When you can pay off your debt, you don't have to pay off the interest. You'll see that you're going to save. Can I get a big amen there? So when it comes to a vehicle, make sure, I I understand we can't uh, uh, pay cash for vehicles, but what you do is make sure it's in your budget because you need it. It's a tool. You need to get to work, otherwise you can't earn money. So we understand we do need vehicles. You do need transport. But you know what? Make sure it's in your budget and then make sure you pay the vehicle off as fast as you can. This whole thing with balloon payments and stuff like that and drive a car that's a million bucks for three ninety nine a month, that's a false lie. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Don't get caught up in that stuff. Don't get caught up in debt. Have a sale. Get rid of the stuff you don't need. Amen? Stop being, don't be a hoarder. Amen. Okay. Then number five, set up a repayment plan. Set up a plan. Consolidate your debt and say, okay, this is I owe, I owe 193,000 bucks on my credit card. This is what I'm going to do to pay it off. Or I owe 10,000 bucks on my credit card or whatever, and this is what I'm going to do, set it out, and I'm going to take five years or ten years, I'm going to pay that off, and you come up with a plan. Go see a bank, go see somebody that can help you consolidate, and now you come up with a plan and say, okay, I'm going to, this is what I'm going to do, this is how I'm going to get out of debt. Set up a repayment plan, and get a counselor, get a financial counselor that can help you. Get somebody that can help you restructure, get you a good interest rate, so that you can get rid of the credit cards. Where's my card machine? Bring, 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 my, bring my stuff here. It's my special box. This is the financial freedom box. There you go. Hallelujah. There you go. Put that here. Hallelujah. Sure. Thank you, Jesus. There you go. You can see how many cards we've already cut up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're going to cut them devils up tonight. Hallelujah today. Hallelujah. So at any time, if you feel you want to come forward, bring your card, and we're going to, we're going to make a plan. Hallelujah. And we're going to cut them up, and we're going to chuck them away. Hallelujah. That devil that's been controlling you, it's hot. You can feel it in your pocket right now. Hallelujah. 
Okay, we're going we're gonna to get rid of that devil. We're going to cut that devil into pieces in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so set up a repayment plan, and then you decide to do it in half the time. Decide to do it in half the time. See, that's where the faith element comes in. The faith element is not lying to yourself, not knowing where you're at. No, it's knowing where you're at and saying, okay, Lord, it's going to take me five years to pay off this debt. I'm trusting you that I can do it in two years or three years and see the hand of God come through for you as you faithfully honor him. Can I get a big amen? amen. And then add no new debt. No new debt. When it comes to a credit card and a card, if you cannot pay your credit card off at the end of the month, you shouldn't have a credit card because that's when the debt kicks in. So you do get 30 days where you can, where you can buy something and it's convenient, and then if you cannot pay that off by the end or you're buying stuff you shouldn't be buying, then you shouldn't have a credit card. That means that you are irresponsible. Tell your neighbor, <clears throat> looks like Pastor Bird speaking about you again. <laughs> <laughs> this is your message today, amen. Are you hearing me? So we need to cut those things up. So no more debt. Well, I must have that couch. Tell your neighbor, you must nothing. I must have those pair of jeans. Tell your neighbor, you must nothing. Woo, I'm going to look so good in them pair of jeans, hallelujah. And then you've got to pay those things off. Amen. No. You mustn't. Must nothing. If you can't afford the couch, buy yourself some cushions, put it on the floor, and sit on the cushions like they do in the Middle East. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And just buy new cushion slips every, 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 every month. Hallelujah. A lot cheaper. Come on, somebody. You must nothing. You don't need the couch, and you must have the couch. You must have the pair of jeans. And that's what we're doing. We're making these guys rich. That's why they, they're very excited about us having debt. They even on their cards, they say, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen? They're very thankful. Why? We're paying for their jets. We're paying for their fuel. We're paying for their five Mercedes Benz. We're paying for their AMGs. We're paying for their Bentleys. Hallelujah. They are very thankful. Every time you swipe your card, it says, Thank you. <laughs> Are you hearing me here today? They make me more money out of the debt than they're making on the object. So, no, no debt. The only debt is for property. I said the only debt is for property. A car, yes, but make sure that you can afford it and pay it off as soon as possible. Try to do it over two years or over three years, four years max. Are you hearing me? Amen. Keep it over that so that you can afford it because you need it to do work or whatever. But even with other things, no clothing accounts. I said no clothing accounts. Amen. I said no clothing accounts. Amen. No furniture accounts. Amen. Are you hearing me here today? Yes. Okay, none of those accounts. Okay, no food accounts. And thank God they don't have debt at KFC. Hallelujah. <laughs> if they brought a KFC card, let me tell you, KFC would be one of the biggest. <laughs> Hallelujah. I see you all going, you can't drive past KFC. You see that KFC, Woo! there's 3C there. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Okay, save me done with debt. <laughs> so add no debt. And then number eight, share your plan with your creditors. You know, the last thing a creditor wants is for you to say nothing. If a creditor can't find you, that's not good. If you're not answering their calls, that's not good. You're going to make sure you get to your creditors. You need to communicate with them and say, hey, this is where I'm at. This is my plan. I'm doing something about it. This is what I can do. I know I need to pay 300 rand a month, but you know what? I'm going to do 100 rand a month, but I commit to that 100 rand. I'm going to keep to that, and it's going to happen. And you know what? When there's communication, you'll be, see, you'll, you'll be surprised at what God can do in people's hearts. You see, but when you run away, you're trying to get away, 
then you're going to get into trouble. And the way you do it, by paying off your debts with your creditors, pay off the smallest bills first. The four, smallest amounts. Start with the smallest amounts, and that's done. Then the next amount, and that's done. And the next amount, and that's done. Amen? Amen. Number nine, and the last, the last one, is stick to it. Stick to it. Hallelujah. Make sure you stick to the plan. It takes discipline. It takes commitment. But stick to it. Hallelujah. Who wants, some, who wants me to cut, to cut up their cards? Hallelujah. Under the anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> who wants me to bind that dead demon in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. You're welcome to come forward, and we're going to cut those things up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there nobody there? Hallelujah. Is it just our 7 o'clock service that needed Jesus? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyway, I'll leave this here. <laughs> if you want to come up over this after the service, you're welcome to do it. Come cut at those cards. Come throw them in here. But you need to make that decision that you are done with debt. Hallelujah. I'm not going to call the institution out by their names because some of you work for them. Hallelujah. Some of you are actually the ones that make that phone call. <laughs> and you've been trained. Hallelujah. How to sell. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Are you blessed this morning? Yes. Did this help you this morning? Yes. Amen. So let's make a decision over this, this holiday period. We're not going to increase in, uh, increasing debt. We're not going to come January and now we need to fast 21 days for you. Amen. Because you went and bought stuff. Okay. We just had Black Friday. Hallelujah. But you've gone from black to red. You understand? You, you were black and now it's your, your finances have got into red. You've gone into debt. Hallelujah. Let's make sure over this, this holiday period, we're not going to waste money. You get a bonus, pay off your debt so that you can have a great year. Don't think, oh, okay, I, I deserve it. You know what? We deserve it. We're going we're gonna to spend it all. No, no, no. W based on what? And I'm not saying that we mustn't enjoy ourselves. If you don't have money to go on vacation, don't go on vacation. You don't need a holiday. You need Jesus. Hallelujah. And it doesn't mean you don't have time off. You've got time off. But you don't have to go waste money and you go away. And then after two weeks, you come back and say, oh, no place like home, but that's 30,000 bucks later. You understand? On your credit card. Okay? So if you don't have the money, and I'm not saying don't go away. I'm saying if you don't have the money, don't waste your money. Amen. Let's be faithful. Pay that debt off so that 2019 is going to be a year of financial freedom. Hallelujah. Where God is going to bless you, bless your family. Give the Lord a hand of praise for that. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Pastors and Leaders Conference, Back to the Star. With Pastors Reinhard Bonke, Cesar Castellanos, Oriel Balano, Art Sepulveda, and your hosts, Pastors Bert and Shane Pretorius. Register online at www.my3c.tv. Back to the Star, G12 Africa 2019. Fourth release, good to me. With songs like 
perfect love. All my days. Great exchange. Umu Shegin. Good to me by TC Live. This 3C Live experience was brought to you by 3C Media Production. For more information, call us on 86 2345 or log on to my3c.tv. Or you could write to us at P.O. Box 10508 Centurion 0046 or email us at tv at my3c.tv. If you need prayer, SMS the word pray followed by your prayer request to 3347 and our team of prayer warriors will be praying for you for the next 30 days. If you would like to become a partner with the ministry, SMS the word partner to 3347 and one of our team members will get back to you in the next few days. You can follow Pastors Bird and Shane Pretorius on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Be inspired daily by morning devotions, ministry updates and much, much more. Log on to my3c.tv for more info.